Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Comic Book Geezers. Welcome to another edition of our show. We've got our honorary third geezer on the line on the Skype call with us. Kirk, what's going on? And his daughter, Quinn. Hey, Thanks good to be here. Thanks for joining us again on this wonderful Sunday afternoon. So uh, Kirk is going to show us a whole bunch of cool issues of DC's Brave and the Bold. All right. Yeah. All right. We, we're going to go back. Brave and the Bold, like people kind of remember it as a Batman team-up book, but actually it started out as a kind of like a sword and sorcery thing because it was more of like the Shining Knight. Um, I think Silent Knight, actually, not the Shining Knight. Silent Knight, Robin Hood. Those kind of characters were for the first bunch of issues. Um, and then, actually, it didn't really get into superheroes till a little bit later with, uh, I'm trying to remember what issue it was. It was 28, where we see the birth of the Justice League. That's actually where the uh -huh. Justice League is. Now, I will say that is a reprint book, obviously. Um, That's the famous Starfish it. issue, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that is the only one I've got. I, I even back way back when I first started collecting, getting a copy of this was a little outside my price range. But um, <laughs> but the next one I have, because I've actually got a really solid collection of Brave and the Bold, is uh, issue. What's that issue, Quinn? Forty-four. All right, why don't you show the people who's that on the cover? It's Hawk. It's Hawk Man. All right, hold on, we got to bring that up. Nice. And it's an old Cougar cover. Um, I was just gonna. I was just gonna ask you who drew that because that looks very familiar. That's that's classic yeah. Hawkman right there. Yeah. yeah. So you know, then then um, there were a couple of um, actually in forty four. He ends up fading out. They did a, a a string of books called Strange Sports uh, that they in the seventies they did a short run of their own series. Didn't do so well. I like the stuff, but it's kind of like science fiction sports stories. They you know aliens playing basketball that kind of stuff. Sure. So, uh, yeah. huh? This is issue 46. All right, bring it up. So it's like volleyball? Yeah, what, are they, what are they playing there? No, maybe not. Oh, basketball. Okay. No, it's basketball. The, you know, and again, um, this is, you know, it gets a little bit. The first one looks like kind of a typical uh, story. When we go to the next one, and it is 47. 47. And you can see. Boxing. A little boxing action going on there. And uh, the guy's hand goes right through the guy's chest. <laughs> <laughs> Something is a mess there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can't get a guy, can't, can't get a hit on the guy. Um, luckily, no guts. This is this was really so it's a clean shot, so to speak. So uh, yeah, kind of nice. As I said, these are kind of fun stories. Um, that fits in with the PG nature of our show. Perfect. Yeah. This is issue forty-eight. Forty-eight. And it's a race car issue where the guy's with like an old Model T or he's, you know, winning the race. So, uh, very nice. And then, and then we get into the last of the strange sports ones that I have 49, where it's a gorilla playing about uh, baseball. How do you beat that? <laughs> um, you know, you gotta look at the books. I got to tell you, I, I never knew that that book got that wacky early on. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. But here, now, everybody remembers the Justice League uh, start with the book. This is the uh, the next book I'm going to show you is actually a, the first time another big uh, team showed up on uh, in DC Comics, and it's the first appearance of the Teen Titans. So, oh, so they Flash, Aqualad, and Robin. Very cool. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> boom. Because Brave and the Bull had a bunch of characters appeared for the first time. Here's the next one on the list. What's the issue, Quinn? Um, it's issue 57. And who's the guy? Metamorpho. Metamorpho. It's first appearance of Metamorpho. <laughs> Another wacky character. So, uh. So did you say that's the first appearance of Metamorpho? Yeah, I believe so. So that's got to be worth a pretty penny. I, yeah, this is probably, I bought this a long time ago. I hate to say it. I don't know what to go and write for copyists these days. So, uh, yeah. So then, uh, just when we thought it was safe. Teen Titans. This is the All second right. appearance of the Teen Titans, and they get their name. And it's the very first appearance of Wonder, Wonder Girl. Girl. All wow. right? Uh, prior to that, that's, we a, that's a great cover, actually. I love that giant creature on there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 the epitome of that time period, too, with the big monster coming to crash people. 
Oh, that's awesome. So, Bill, um, Bill if you're watching, you got to make sure you get that one. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this one's kind of expensive because it is the first appearance of Wonder Girl. Oh, um, right. But, uh, 62. You got to get loud 61. here. 61. This is, uh, I think, the first Silver Age appearance of these two characters, Starman and Black Canary. Oh, very cool. So, they appear. And the Mist, who I liked, was a Golden Age villain. Um, yeah, I tell you, the, the colors on that cover really pop big time. That's in great, great shape. Yeah. So that's a that's a twelve center. So what's that? Nineteen sixty-five, something like that. Looks like we're looking fucked. That's in great shape. I gotta say, I'm a big JSA fan, so like, I collected a lot of the old um, Silver Age appearances of these characters. And, uh, I think this was the, written by Gardner Fox. Did a lot of this stuff back then. See what's the year on this bad boy? It is 1965. Okay, wow, that was right on. Yeah, the, the big, the big splash pages too. Yeah, you know, it's like bum bum bum. So, but very cool stuff. So uh, when did uh, when did a little, I divert a little bit here? But when did Black Canary first start to get involved with the Green Arrow business? That took place because originally she was a member of the JSA. So then right. they ended up, her husband ends up dying, supposedly, in the original writing of it. The, her husband gets killed, saving everybody. So then she's so heartbroken, she decides she doesn't want to live on that earth anymore. So she moves in, she moves over to our, well, Earth, the first Earth One with the Justice League Earth. And then she slowly took up with uh, Green Arrow. Gotcha. Okay. Oh yeah, it's one of those. And that yeah, now everybody knows them together as a couple. And then later okay. on, they wrote it that it wasn't that wasn't really her. It was the daughter of the the original Black Canary. So it gets a little weird. Um, now we've got issue sixty two. Back, back again with Starman and Black Canary. Ah, another cool cover. Yeah, and you got the sportsman. I mean, this guy was kind of crazy. He got rocket skis and you know. And the Huntress, that's the original Golden Age Huntress. Who now we, you know, I hate to say nobody kind of remembers her. They remember the new Huntress. Yep. But, I see uh, Wildcat in the bottom. That's a cool yep. character. Yeah, there's another one from that period. Um, then, um, what's the next issue, Quinn? It is issue 63, and it has Supergirl and Wonder Woman. See? Oh. Very so nice. They're doing, they're doing the team-up thing at this point. Um I don't have the first Batman team up book, which I believe was like the next issue. I was like, I gotta get it. It's on my to do list. So would you uh, say Marvel kinda took up the 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 reins uh, a few years a little more than a few years later with their Marvel team up and Marvel two and one based on the yeah. success book? Yeah, okay. And I gotta say this, this came out first, but I think Marvel did it a little bit better. Because Mar you know, DC did the DC comics but i think quality wise i think the quality was better on the team up in two and one books over brave and the bold and dc comics presents but that's just my humble opinion but th right. this is a good one this is a good run um and um some of the covers are great all right what's the next one quinn the next one is is issue 64 having batman and eclipso look at that Another very cool cover. Yeah, the, I love this period because I think the covers are fantastic. The interior was so good, but I mean, poor Neil Adams. I don't think that guy even slept during this whole period because he, <laughs> he was picking out covers for like everybody. I don't think he, I don't think he did this one, but no, it's not him. But yeah, it doesn't look like him. But there were still a lot of great comics, you know. Okay, now Batman still hasn't. He, he's coming in and out at this point, but he's not uh, probably the only one doing it. This. Then in because in issue sixty five we see a weird pairing of Flash and the Doom Patrol. Oh, is that Grodd in the bottom there? Is that uh... no? The, the, for, again, in the sixties and seventies, for whatever reason, DC Comics loved apes. So I think it was the Planet of the Apes, all that stuff. The Doom Patrol had one of their um, villains was a giant talking ape too. I think okay. it was part of the deal. You know. Um, 
Then this one is, which one is it? This is number 71, and it had Batman and the Green Arrow. And this is before before we we see the goatee and everything. This is more of the golden age. Um, oh yeah, totally. Yep. Yeah, no, he's all clean cut. And I'll be honest, very two dimensional character at this point. I think it was later on that they really started fleshing him out. But uh, I mean, a lot of that happened with the '70s characters, anyways. But all right. And then what's the next one? Um, here we have issue seventy-two. It's the Spectre and the Flash. Spectre. Whatever. <laughs> it's like, whatever, Dad. Big, big green guy. <laughs> All right, there you go. And I think that's a, an Infantino cover. So that's, nice. that's pretty cool. It's not that's two right, characters you, you don't normally see together. The Flash and the Spider Yeah, and that's what I, I was trying to... I like that. I mean, the problem with a lot of the team up books was it was always that one character was always the main character. And it was, you know, like Brave and the Bold was usually Batman plus somebody else. DC right. Comics was Superman and somebody else. You know, Marvel team up, Spider Man, and two in one thing. I mean, I thought it's a little better when I think they switched it up, but nobody ever, I guess it never caught on enough. Um, all right, what's the next one? Um, it's issue 73. It's Aquaman and the Atom. Ooh. There you go. That's a cool combo there. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right, there you go. And we got 77 with Batman. Batman and the Adam. I love this cover. Yeah. But again, you know, why would you go to all this trouble to tie him to this and then tie, it's way too much work, I think. Yeah, they're all just a lot of a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Now now we've kind of switched over um to just Batman books. And so then we go to book eighty. It is Batman and the Creeper. The Creeper. Is, yeah. I and don't know if I'm, so I'm not familiar yeah. with the Creeper. You don't remember the Creeper? No, I don't remember he, the Creeper. Yeah, he's a Steve Ditko um, really? creation. Mm. Yeah. Not as famous as, like, obviously, like Spider-Man, but, yeah. But, uh, yeah, and the Neil Adam cover, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah, like a giant bug guy. I don't know if that's a great villain, but. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 70s, right? It's, yeah, uh, that was bad, you know. Um, all right, what's. Now we have Batman and the Flash for number 81. Oh, that's a killer cover. You that great? Yeah, wow. That's a, that's a nice one. So we're still 12 right, sensitive. So actually, we're still in the 60s. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. For whatever reason, we moved ahead to the 70s. Yeah, yeah it, it only hung out until like, I think 1980 is when this, this series finally folded. Oops, all right. What do you got here? All right. Mm, that's now we have Batman and Aquaman. Uh -huh. the sleepwalker from the sea. All righty. They look a little trashed. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and then what's the next one? Uh, now we have number 88, and it's Batman and Wildcat. And again, another Neil Adam cover. Yeah. It's amazing. You can you can tell those Neil Adam covers the second you, you lay your eyes on them, right? Yeah, and then they're, they're just gorgeous. So. Now, for number eighty nine, we have Batman and the Phantom Stranger. Who we talked uh, about before. That's right. All right. Nice. Another cool, cool cover there. Yeah. And then, uh, what do you got? Now we have Batman and Adam Strange. 90. Number 90. Uh-huh. So, I always love Death seems to make appearances in all these books, too. You know? Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, Death never gets anybody, yeah? So. For number 91, it's Batman and Black Canary. Huh. I, tell, I bought this one a long time ago. You can tell the blue little circle sticker, you know? That's from our friends here. New yeah. points, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I bought that a long time ago. October Country. Yeah, yeah. Bought a lot of books off of them in the day. Okay. For number 92, we have Batman and the Bat Squad. 
which was mm-hmm. just a bunch of people who solved mysteries, kind of like almost like a Scooby Doo thing without the dog. <laughs> Uh, obviously didn't do so well so uh yeah then it, well and only appearance but uh so then um this cover i love um it's brave in the bull and it's batman and the house of mystery have you ever seen this one i don't think oh that's a awesome cover wow pull that over a little bit to closer to you that's okay very cool back. Trying to get the, there. There you go. Bingo. That's a dynamite cover. Holy moly. Which issue number is that? That's, that, that's is, that is 93. That's a nice copy, too. I bought yeah, that. that is. Yeah. I paid back in the day, I paid 10 bucks for it. I don't know what it's going for these days. But yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's a real pristine copy. And number 95, we've got Batman and question mark. Uh-huh. And I'm trying to remember who it was. I don't know. They did a couple of these. Drove me nuts. You never know. I, I think it might have been Green Arrow showed up in a lot of these. So, so because there was that character called the question mark, right? The question, yeah. uh, the guy with the top hat and the uh, yeah, the question. Yeah, it's not the question though. Uh, another Steve Ditko creation, actually. Uh huh. Yeah, Speaking of, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's Sergeant Rock. Yep. One at a time. <laughs> All right, you got it. Now we have uh, ninety-six with Sergeant Rock. Purchased uh, from our friends in Texas. Yep. I yeah, they sticker on the front. <laughs> they've been great. I've been I've been filling in holes in my collection with them. They're they're <laughs> very helpful in all the wrong ways. So uh, now we have number ninety-seven. It's Batman and Wildcat. Huh. Yeah, I like that Wildcat character. Yeah, yeah. No powers, but you know, a great boxer, amateur boxing champion, right? And puts on the puts on the cowl and kick ass. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I got to say though, sometimes you got to watch the, the the ears. Sometimes look a bit kind of like in this one too. You can see like it's got big ears. I don't they're know. Floppy. They, yeah, they're floppy. Yeah. Like. Got to got to do that right when you draw it. All right, what yeah. do we got? Again, we have Batman and the Phantom Stranger. Ah, cool. And then now we're at. Okay. Now we're at issue ninety-nine. It's Batman and the Flash. Ooh, Batman's looking a little worse for the wear on that cover. Oh right? yeah. yeah. Very cool. And, and then now we have number a hundred. It's Batman and four famous co-stars, which is Green Lantern, Black Canary, Robin, and Green Arrow. Nice. Got the whole crew in there. Yeah. Uh, there you go. And how many of these you got, Kirk? There's 200 in the run. Jeez. <laughs> so we've actually, so we've actually just cleared the first hundred, which I have a good hunk of them. So uh, we started at 44, really, and we go. Uh, so we finished one third. So, uh, what do you got? Um, now for number 101, we've got Batman and Metamorpho. Another cool cover there. Yeah. I like Metamorpho, you know? Yep. Another weird character. Uh, here's one of my favorite ones, too. For number 103, we have Batman and Metal Man. Oh. I like the Metal Man, right? Yeah. So uh, it keeps popping up every so often. All right. Um, for 104, it's Batman and the Dead Man. Uh, everyone's favorite Dead Man. Yeah. Gotta love Dead Man. What's the next one, Monty? Um, the next one is Batman and Wonder Woman. Yeah, for a while, if you know, historically, they took Wonder Woman's superpowers away and her costume away. Yeah. And had to run around with, like, a super spy. This was during that period. Oof. <laughs> kind, of, kind of a lot of bad choices there, but... 
they got well, they, they were reaching, right? You know, it's like uh, to come up with something good. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. And for 107, we've got Batman and Black Canary. Okay. And who do we got next? Um, now for 108, we've got Batman and Sergeant Rock. This one's interesting because it's Sergeant Rock and Batman versus basically Hitler slash the devil. Alrighty then. Can't beat that, right? I'm like, again, in the 70s, what, you know, what would sell? So that was it. It was like Nazis, everything. I was like, oh my God. So, um, this is 109. 109. It's Batman and Demon. The Demon. Which, again, I love this character. It's a great character. Um, at this point, I think he had his own series was running at that time, too. And I tried to bring in some extra fire. I, I really like the Demon character a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that, that really needs, I, I don't know who could do, because those original books are so fantastic, but yeah. I don't know who, who could do that character justice. Um, maybe like Warren Ellis, who does some stuff now. Okay, next. Um, now we have 110, which is Batman and Wildcat. Uh-huh. So, and the Wildcat had a lot of a lot of team ups here. Yeah, you you see Green Arrow and Wildcat, they pop up. Black Canary shows up in a lot of these. Um, so they're all they're really and they're great. They're one shot reads, so very few uh, carry over to a second issue. So they're good. Here we have 111. It's Batman and the Joker. Oh. So how many how many team ups did they do with a hero and a villain in this series? Only Probably couple, not often. There was like one with the penguin, one with, another one with the Joker. Um, you know, um, Rose and Thorn, who was kind of a dark hero thing. I mean, so it, yeah, it was only a couple of. I mean, those stories can kind of get done in a regular Batman book or whatever. Right, That's right. How I look at it. Um, my next guy up, who's we got these. These are great books because at this period, DC started doing the 100-page spectacular. Uh, I don't know if you have any of those. I've collected almost all of them, actually, because when I was a kid, that was like a score, man. Because um, you get this book for 60 cents. Now, the going rate was like 20, 25 cents, but for 60 cents, you got a 100-page spectacular. You can get – they're doing them now at, at Walmart. You can buy new versions of this stuff, but it's the old original ones I, I've got a soft spot for, so – the next Here one up. we have Batman and Mr. Miracle. And yeah, you, you see, so you get the Batman and Mr. Miracle story, but then you also get like an old Brave and the Bold story, the Silent Knight, who I told you appeared in like the first like 10 issues of Brave and the Bold, an old Hawkman story. Um, so you get a whole bunch of stuff in that. So it's kind it's of good cool. bang for your buck, right? Yeah, 60 cents. How do you beat that? Um, then we have another 100 page. It's 113. It's Batman and Metal Men. Hmm. So. Again, yeah, you got one new story and a bunch of old reprints, which you got to think was probably cheap for DC to produce because oh, they yeah. weren't, they're not paying anybody for rights or anything at this point. So it's kind of like they just pulled this stuff out of the archives. And then, and then we have. For 114, we have Batman and Aquaman. So, and you got a Teen Titan story. It's all good stuff. All right. Well, let's see what else we got. Oh. All right. Uh, yeah, we got a couple more of these 100-page spectaculars. We've got Batman and the Atom, and that's 115. We killed Batman and no witnesses. I don't know. Where, again, where was the atom? I don't want to know. That's probably a too up close and per- personal, but you know, <laughs> makes you wonder. But uh, uh, we got 116 with um, the uh, Specter, which is pretty solid. This is another good book. Again, Jim Jim Paro did a lot of the art for this. It was it was a really you know it's a pretty good story. I just bought this recently. Um, a hun- for 117, it's Batman and Sergeant Rock. Again, another Sergeant Rock appearance. Yeah. Because um, again, you got to remember, this was only like 25 years after World War II, so Rock is appearing, and it's you know it's doable nowadays. Rock would be like 100. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, Marvel was doing the same thing with uh, with Sergeant Fury, so why yeah, not, you know. All right. And then, and then for 118, we have Batman and Wildcat co-starring the Joker. Huh. In the boxing ring there. All right. Just where Wildcat wants to be, right? Yeah, yeah. You figure, right? If anybody's gonna take it, it's that good. But uh, oh, this is a great cover too. This is. 119 and it's Batman and Man Bat. Ooh, all right, that's pretty cool. I always like the I always like the Man Bat character. Yeah, he's another character I, I think needs kind of to get refreshed and everything and kind of redone because it's a great character. It's just I don't think he's ever gotten his his true chance, you know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, uh... <coughs> For 120, we have Batman and. Commandy, the last boy on Earth. Aha, uh-huh, look at that. Yeah, that's beautiful. That, that's a nice one. And then uh, 121 is Batman and the Metal Men. You see a lot of the same characters. Oh, I see that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you wouldn't see Superman because at that time they were publishing World's Finest, which, you know, every month had a Superman Batman team. So. Yeah. Now uh, for 122, we have Batman and Swamp Thing. Oh, there you go. Very cool. I was kind of waiting for one of those. Yeah. He appears a couple times. There's a later one done by Kaluta that's really good. Um, um, now for um, 124, we have Batman and Sergeant Rock. <laughs> again. Again, I was going to say. <laughs> Put a rock in my ass. Come in here again. All right. But uh, again, it's funny because it's got a picture of, uh, he says, finish the cover apparel. Rock kills Batman or I kill you. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, give a power on there. Uh, rest his soul, poor guy. All right. And then here we have for 125 Batman and the Flash. Cool. This is cool. For 130, we've got Batman and four famous co stars Green Arrow, The Atom, The Joker, and Two Face. We love Two Face. Oh, gotta love that. Little Two Face action. And then who's next? We've got um for 123. We've got Batman and Plastic Man Metamorpho. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Some Crazy. of the stuff got zinc. Yeah, it's kind of like all over the place because you know. But because uh, Plastic Man actually didn't start out as a DC character, right? Kind of. The name he was bought DC was smart they bought up a lot of the golden age uh, comic companies that folded and absorbed those characters plastic man was one of them so, so did they introduce uh, elongated man after they absorbed the, after they bought the rights to plastic man or were they doing elongated man and then brought plastic man in I don't remember I think, but, I think elongated man came first to be honest really? I mean, plastic okay. older but I think it was after that that they started using them I mean DC okay. was big one that, you know, that's how they got like Captain Marvel slash Shazam was they sued for the rights. And then, you know, Fawcett that owned the rights to it was kind of like, you can have it. Uh, you know, right. we're all making because at that point, superhero books weren't selling anyway. So they were like, we're out of this. So, yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, well, as we're approaching a half right. hour, why don't you show off the last handful? And then uh, amazing how time flies, huh? Holy yeah, smokes. Yeah. I mean, I'll. Grab, grab those, Clinton. You talk about them. You're All up. Right. Here we have 126, which is Batman and Aquaman. Another cool cover there. Very nice. And that was 126, you said, Quinn? Yep. Okay. Oh, we'll do these last three. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Four. And then we have, a, we have um, number 127, which is Batman and, again, Wildcat. I'm telling you, Wildcat. And we've got, okay, 128, which is another Batman and no. Miracle. Again. 129, which is Batman and Green Arrow. And the final one we're going to do today, 133, which is another Batman and, and Dead, Dead Man. Oh, that's a great cover, too. That? That's a sweet one. That's another, it's a, another it's a Jim Apparel. 
That's very nice. Kind of love I mean, again, these are great books because you can buy them individually, pick, pick them up one at a time because they're, you know, one book, one read, you're done. You know, it's just a short Batman story with somebody else. So, And the most think, most of them are fairly affordable now, right? So like yeah. Books, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like some of the stuff is like the House of Mystery one, the, you know, first appearance of the Titans. Those things will run you. But most of them, yeah, most of them really, I pick them up for like a couple that I have left to get. I'm, I'm picking them up for four or five bucks. There's one, and I couldn't find it. I bought it with you recently. It was the first uh, Silver Age appearance of Green Arrow with the goatee and everything. That, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yep, yep. Yeah, that cost you a little bit ex extra money. It's amazing. His goatee cost me like an extra 20 bucks or something. You know, what are you into? Who would have thought facial hair, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but all, all good stuff. Yeah, I say reasonably priced and easy to buy. And I said, you don't have to buy them in sets you can just buy one or two i mean great stuff cool well this is going to uh, go over well with our viewers because we get we've got a lot of new people joining the channel recently and a lot of people asking for more dc content so uh, i know my person you know i would say 90 percent of my collection is marvel i think bill has a little bit more when it comes to dc but i know you got a lot of dc a lot more than we do so uh yeah think, think about additional dc titles that maybe you can pull in the weeks ahead uh, to share with our viewers, and uh, we definitely love to do that. Well, people have got requests too. Sometimes I don't think of things, and then people, you know, so hey. But like, uh, yeah, how's your Green Lantern collection looking? I've got some. I got some stuff, and I'll be honest. Um, we have some stuff that's listed currently at our 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 store. So what I'll do is I don't mind pulling straight from there too, and just we can go look at some of the old covers and stuff. Uh, it's, a lot of it's more like '80s, '90s stuff in the store, but. You know, I've got some old stuff, too, of my own that would be fun to share. Okay, that might be something to do, because I know we haven't done anything on the channel for Green Lantern yet. So uh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, we haven't really covered either of those. So uh, if you got some stuff, you know, let me know. And we'll, if, if the viewers want to see it, which I'm sure they will, uh, we'll cover that uh, in the next couple of segments. So... Uh, so I guess uh, I guess that's that's a wrap for today's Brave and the Bold. So thanks to Kirk and Quinn for joining us yet again, showing us some cool old stuff, and uh, we'll see you guys all in the next couple of days. We got uh, a lot of stuff that we're working on, even though we all can't meet together. We're going to record some videos and bring them to you uh, from our homes. All right, not in the usual places, but uh, you know, in. in in hopes of getting everybody some cool content to watch while we all have some spare time on our hands, right? So uh, for Kirk and Quinn, say goodbye, guys, and we'll see you all real soon. Thanks, guys. Excuse me.